Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome. Uh, uh, we are Ignite House Ministries International and welcome to our channel, Ignite Global TV. And God bless you tonight. Um, I believe and trust that God has a word for us tonight on this leadership perspective. And I want to focus tonight and on the uh, uh, um, what's happening around us, on matters happening around us. And not as a focus on that, but just looking at how we need to respond. And there is a word here from the book of Joshua and chapter 3 where Joshua had to give a word to the nation of Israel about what the situation, what they were actually going through at that very moment. And this was, and he declared to them that they needed the ark because they had not walked on that way before. And so, uh, we, we're going to go into the Word, and, and this Apostle Humphrey, uh, uh, Pepe, and uh, uh, I want to just go into the Word right away, uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 1 to 2 and verses 4 to 5. Uh, the Bible says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. This it here is the Ark of the Covenant. So they needed to see, they needed to focus their eyes on the Ark. And as you read then verse 4 and 5, the Bible then says, yet there shall be a space between you and it, it here being the ark, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Now, 2,000 cubits, it's, it's, it's about um, probably approximately five, 10 soccer fields, because 1,000 cubits is about five soccer fields. Um, so 2,000 cubits by measure. So they are that far. The ark and the Levites and the priests are that far ahead of them. And so the children of Israel are coming from behind. But God is saying here through the command of the leaders that they need to have a view. They need to see as they move. They need to see the ark. Wherever it is, they need to see the ark. So the Bible then further may says, do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. You have not passed this way before. And verse 5, And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Father, we bless the reading of your word tonight as we speak to the children of God and to the leaders in the house of God, in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that we are connected to Christ Jesus. So I bless your holy name. Let your name and the name of Christ be exalted and be glorified as you minister upon our lives. Move as you please, Holy Spirit, in every place, in every home, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every soul be focused as they listen to the words tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, now, this is an interesting story because here the, the spies have been sent out and they have spied out the land and they have made a, already made a covenant with Rahab and, and, and so they are coming back to report to him and so they are about to cross over to the land and so here the Bible says here, 
that this is the path they have not walked before. So because they have not walked this path before, they needed to focus on the ark. They needed to see. They needed to, Now the ark represents the presence of God. They need to see the presence of God at all times because they are walking through a path that they have not, a path through, the, through which they have not walked before. So, so God gives them clear instructions. He says when you see the priests and the Levites and the ark, you know you are on the right way. So they, you have to be behind. Never be ahead of the ark and keep a certain distance. You know, now, 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 this talks to their focus. It says 2,000 cubits. And I said about 10 soccer fields. Now, now, if you can just imagine 10 soccer fields ahead of you and God still expected them to see, that means that their eyesight needed to be, to be strong. Their eyesight needed to be strong. And so we are moving. We are in, in this period. We have not walked this path before. We, we are, you know, because of the COVID-19, we are in this, in this particular season. Yes, because of the lockdown, we are in this particular season. The, the, the church's doors are locked. Yes, we are kept away from the corporate worship corporate prayer we are we are uh, we are kept away from the corporate praise and worship and and, and, and but, but still the ark is ahead of us god is about to do wonders as we go through this season and through this time if if, if time allows i will i will take you through isaiah 59 19 where the bible says that you know when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him your destiny is certain. The purpose of God for your life is still certain. You see, this is not God's mind or God's thoughts. And I will take you through Jeremiah 29, 11 as well. So that you see, this is not God's plan or God's thoughts or God's mind or God's idea about your life. God has better thoughts about his church. God has great thoughts and great destiny, great purpose to fulfill upon his church. Yes, the, the manifestation of the power of God. It might seem as though where is God in all this? But I want you to realize that God is right here in the process. You just need to see the ark. You need to see where the presence of God is. You need to see his leadership. You need to see his direction. So he says, go after them. Go after the ark. In other words, follow the ark. Follow the presence of the Lord. Follow the direction of the ark as you move through this particular season. As confusing as it might be, but God is still leading us as we go through this season. But follow the ark, follow the presence. You, all you need is the presence of God, is to make sure you are following that presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, you need to have, in other words, the, the, the commanders here and the leaders are saying, although the ark will be about... Um, a thousand meters away, you still need to be able to see the ark to, 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 to discern God's direction in this particular season. In other words, the, the direction of the Lord, your, your discerning ability need to be that strong. In other words, you need to have like an eagle's eye. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagles. Yes, the eagle loves the wind storm. So we are in that season, the season of the storm for the church, yes, the season of the storm for children of God, the season, this is the season of the storm, but, 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 but now they say the eagles then love the storm, and so it will dive into the storm. It, 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 it's also able to discern, they say, the storm when the storm is still far. But something strong, so the, the one point that I just want to highlight about the eagle, and I'm just highlighting this because the Bible talks often about the eagles. So, so I want you to really see the, the eagle has a very strong eyesight. Although its, it's eye size is, is the same size as the human eye, but they say about 3.2 kilometers away, an eagle is still able to spot a rabbit. 3.2 kilometers away. So God expects of us, therefore, to see from afar, to see beyond our ability, our natural ability. So he wants to give us, in other words, God is giving us the ability to see a thousand 
you know, meet us away. He's able, he's, 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 he's empowering us to be able to see his direction. Yes, we may not know what's going to become of the church after the lockdown, but God is sure of what's going to become a church after the lockdown. The church is just going to grow stronger and stronger. Yes, because we move from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Yes, we move by the power of the Holy Spirit. The church is not growing weaker. It is growing stronger and stronger. As long as we are focused on the ark, following the presence of the ark, discerning the position of the ark, an eagle's eye is four to five or eight times stronger than a human eye. And God is saying, see his presence. He's releasing, I believe, in this season because God wants us to see the ark of his presence. He's releasing an eagle's eye anointing that we may indeed be able to discern and to see the direction God is taking his church to. So we are entering into a new era. Joshua says, you have not walked this path before. That means you are entering into a new era. The children of Israel have been delivered from Egypt. But before deliverance, I want you to remember, before deliverance from Egypt, they had to sanctify themselves. And, and, and the Lord said that he will only, you know, God was saying that he was about to kill the firstborn of the Egyptians. But he says he will kill the firstborn of every household as long as he can't see the blood. So he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. For they were instructed to apply the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. So God says, I will simply be looking for the blood. So they had to sanctify themselves before they entered into their deliverance. Now God is taking them to an, another season here. God, now they have gone through the wilderness. So they went through the wilderness putting on shame. So the other nations were pointing fingers at them. Forty years in the wilderness, and, and, and it, was, it, was, it was really a reproach for the nation of Israel here as they moved through this. But God is about to take them into a new beginning, into a new era, and Joshua said, you have not walked this path before, so you need to get ready. In other words, you need to be prepared, you need to be sanctified. And I want us to realize as we move into a new season and a new era, it is necessary to be sanctified. The nation of Israel is about to be you know, God is up, uh, about to break the shame that they carried through the wilderness. It's about to break the shame. For in, in Joshua chapter 5 and verse 9, which is later from where we have read in uh, Joshua, uh, the Lord declared to them that today I have rolled away the shame of Egypt. The pointing of fingers, yes, as they thought, you know, some of them were saying, where is your God? You might have gone through a situation through different situations, a situation in your life where others were pointing fingers at you, but they were not pointing fingers at you, at you. they were pointing their fingers at your God. They were actually questioning your God to say, where is your God? Where is your God? Now God here is about to show up. Joshua said, tomorrow you're going to see wonders. You're going to see wonders, but therefore you have to sanctify yourself. You have to be ready to see when God moves and to stop when God stops. But God is moving and taking us into a place of destiny, a place of greater fulfillment. It's about to move upon your life, but we have to sanctify yourself because you are entering into a new season. Every season we enter into will require sanctification. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, God describes the kind of sanctification that he requires from us. The Bible says, Paul says, I pray that you may be sanctified completely. So this talks about total sanctification, that we need to be purified. We need to be consecrated completely. And he says, may your spirit, soul, and body be found blameless until the coming of Christ. Yes, until the coming of the new season. As we enter into this new season, yes, may your soul, your spirit, your body be sanctified completely. To Jacob, God presented it this way. Jacob had seen the power of God. He had seen the power of God, and he changed the name of Luz to Bethel, and he moved on, you know, for many years. He's been away approximately 14 years that, that, that Joshua had passed through this place. Now God meets him, and he reminds him to go back to Bethel according to the promise that he made to God. And the first thing that Joshua says to the people that had not been to Bethel before, so he's leading these people. They have not been to Bethel before. They don't know 
know what it means to carry the presence of God upon their lives. But, but, but Jacob knew. So, so God said to him, go back to Bethel. Immediately God said that Joshua, Jacob knew exactly what that means, that, that, what that meant. And the first thing he says to them, he says, change your garments. In other words, as we move into a new era, in, other, in order for us to really um, navigate through this place, this path that we have not walked before, we need to change our garments. We need to change our garments. Jacob here is talking to people that have not walked that path before. He says, we are going back to, we, we are going to Bethel. You are going to Bethel, but I'm going back to Bethel. He says, change your garments. He says, throw away your idols. Now, as you move into a new season, every new season, you need to be sanctified for that particular season. And God is taking us through this season to sanctify his church. He's reshaping it. He's working on it. He wants his church to change his garments. I also want you to see, you know, from the New Testament here, to understand what, what a new season is about. Because when we read in the book of Luke chapter 5, and I want to read this, Luke chapter 5 and verse 36 and verse 37. Verse 36 to 37, Luke chapter 5. Here the Bible says, Then he spoke a parable to them, and this is Jesus. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that, makes, that, that was taken out of the new does not match the old. Two things. He says, no one now. Understand this. He's talking about the new season. How, we, how to enter into a new season. How to enter into a path that you have not walked before. He says, no one will take a new patch, a new piece of garment, and, and put it on the old one. He says, no one does that. And so he therefore doesn't expect his church to do, this, to do that, you know, which no one does. He says, no one will, will take a new, a, a new piece of garment and, and, and patch the, 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 the old garment. Furthermore, he says, there are two things that will happen. It will tear off the old to destroy it completely, or then it will not match. God is taking us to a place where we need to match with what God is doing. We need to flow in the same river that God is moving in. Yes, we need to be symmetrical to God's move for the next season. We need to be symmetrical to the new season which God is taking us to. God is taking us to this place. It's an amazing place, a place of wonders, a place of signs and wonders, a place of revival. But he's saying, get ready. To summarize, he says, get ready for the new season. How do you get ready? Jacob says, change your garments. Jesus says, no one will just close the hole. You want to change. In other words, it's the same message. You want to change the garment. You want to make sure that it's new. Furthermore, in verse 37, he says, and no one puts new wine into old wine skins, or else new wine will burst the old wine skin and be spilled, and the new wine skin will be ruined. He says, we are getting into the new. You don't want to lose what you already have. So don't try to use what you already have for the coming move of God, for the coming season, for, the, for your destiny. You see, what you have, you have gone through before has helped you to get to where you are. Now, as you move on, you need to look forward. Moses said to the people of Israel before they crossed the Red Sea, he says, go forward. He didn't say look back. The enemies were coming, but he says, say, go forward. So there's a place God wants us to go into. And it's a path we have not walked before. So our sensitivity, therefore, to the presence of God, the ark of the presence of God, you know, the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God is taking us through. Don't focus on the COVID-19. Yes, follow the requirements as prescribed, but don't focus on that. This is a season to focus on God. If you really want to see your destiny, if you want to really want to make it, on, you know, to the end, don't focus on, on losing your job. There are some stuff you don't want to hear. Have the faith upon the Lord that you're not going to lose your job. That yes, God has, sometimes it's scary to just know that people are dying because of this sickness. But I want you to realize that God is your healer. Focus your eyes on the earth. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the originator of our faith. Put on, oh, put off the old man and put on the new. 
So God always expects us to, to change our garments, to be sanctified for the coming season. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord, the Lord now, if, if he wants you to put a new garment, I want you to really understand that he will make one for you. God is in the process of making one for you. Unless you are focused on him, you won't be able to see that new garment. Get rid of the old mindset. Now, this talks about the old mindset. You know, the old wineskin, the old mindset. Get rid of the old mindset. There are things that have helped you until now, but it won't be able to take you further than now. Samson understood this principle. The Bible says, says of Samson that he picked up an old, a, a, a fresh jawbone of a donkey. A fresh, the Bible uses the word fresh, a fresh jawbone of a donkey. And he used it against the Philistines, and he killed a lot of them. About a thousand of them he killed with that one jawbone of a donkey. One man's army, but he was not a one man's army because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because, because the Bible would say that the Holy Spirit will come upon him. In other words, his focus at that particular moment was on the ark of the presence of God. It was on the spirit of the Lord, and this is what God is calling on us to focus on the spirit of the Lord, how God is leading us in this season. God leads us. You see, we need to be consistent. When it comes to pursuing, I mean, pursuing God's uh, presence, God's direction, you know, God's presence, we need to be consistent. However, God doesn't use the same way all the time in every season to lead his people. He's taking us into the new. So Samson, after he had used that and he had killed a lot of, a lot, a, you know, a lot of the enemies here, the Bible says that he threw away that, gum, that, that, that jawbone and he cried out unto the Lord. He did not cry unto the Lord with a jawbone. He didn't say to the Lord, Lord, you can use this jawbone one more time. Lord, you can use this. But the Bible says he threw it away and he was thirsty and he cried out unto the Lord. There's a season to cry out unto the Lord. Yes, keeping our focus on the ark of the covenant of the covenant of the Lord. This is the time, yes, to say, Lord, release the eagle's eye anointing upon my life that I may see your direction, that I may see your presence that I may see your heart in this season, for I can only see God's destiny for, you know, through, the, through the heart of God. I can only see the destiny where God wants me to be through the heart of God. It is his heart that I want to see for this season. God's ways will release God's acts. Hallelujah. God's ways will release God's acts. This is the season to throw away the, 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 the jawbone that has been utilized, that has been used already. Because there's a fresh one, there's a fresh instrument God, that God is releasing for the new season. You see, understand it this way. When you keep focus on the ark and on the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord will make you. Jesus said to his disciples, follow me and I will make you. Church, we are made as we are following him. In Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, this can help us understand what, 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 what it really means to follow God, what it really means to be made by him, what it really means to be positioned where we meant to be positioned by God himself. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, and I really want you to, to just understand that. This is a common scripture that we confess all the time. But, 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 but listen to this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. Underline the word, the plans. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God says, I know the plans. The plans. Now, this, this talks the word no also. I want you to just underline it. But, but I want to use that word, you know, from our, our perspective of seeing God as we are looking at God. In the, and I've just read from the NIV here. If I can read from the King James Version, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expectant end. And I want to just also underline the word expectant end here because I want to really see where God is taking us to. Just the three Hebrew words here that I want to use to just explain 
We have not walked through this path before. We have not walked through this way before. But God is taking us somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. The word, the Hebrew word for plans is the, it has its origin uh, um, in the idea of a weaver of fabric. A weaver of fabric. A weaver of fabric. Now, if you look at any fabric and Jesus says, well, you need to change your garments. You can't just put a patch on the, on the new one. I mean, on the old one, you know, it will tear the old and they, it's not going to match with the new. And, and, and so here, God, in other words, God is saying, I, I, I want to weave a new fabric just for you. I want to weave a new, I'm weaving a new one for you. But you see, this will depend on your intimate relationship with me. Now, the word yada is the word no for, for it's an, an intimate word, intimate relationship. And I want to just make reference to this word in, in the context of our relationship with God. So God is saying that God is, you know, because the, the word of the word plans here, which is in other versions the word thoughts here, but the Hebrew word gives one an idea of a weaver of, a, of, of fabric. And, and so I want you to understand that God is saying that he's weaving plans for us. There are plans that God is weaving for us. If we can keep the intimate relationship, if we can stay focused on the ark, if we can look unto Jesus, the originator of our faith, the author and finisher of our faith, the originator of our faith, God is saying that he will take us to an expectant end. Sometimes the future may look blink, you know, and God is saying that, no, your future is, is great. Now, now, these are people who were a bit confused. Probably they began to believe that whatever situation they were in was God's purpose. I don't know where you are moving in right now, whatever you could be facing right now. Sometimes we are tempted to just believe that this must be God's purpose. Just because it's staying longer, you know, and you begin to believe that this must be God's purpose. This might be what God has placed me there, here for, and so on. But I want you to realize that in whatever situation you are in, God is able to turn it around. God is able to use it to your, to your benefit. He might not have been the one that has taken you there but he's able to use it to, our, to your advantage. So the expected end here, the, word, the Hebrew word for expectant also, it's a word that is used uh, from the context of making a rope. Now, when you make a rope, it's thread by thread. You are taking thread by thread, and the Bible also tells us a threefold cord is not easily broken. In other words, you take a thread, a single thread that can break, Alone you can break. Alone this, alone this situation can break you. Alone, alone through whatever situation you could be going through, through the challenges of life, they, the, such situations can break you. But I want you to realize that if you can be weaved with God through this intimate relationship with him, a threefold cord is not easily broken. A thread that can break when it's connected to another thread that cannot be broken. What's going to be visible there will be, will, be, it will be more of God, you know, God is, 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 is a more visible thread in the rope that he's making. In other words, God is saying, if you remain focused, if you remain focused on me and know my heart, you will know that in my heart I'm weaving plans for you. They are greater plans. Yes, my plans are to ensure you are healed. My plans are to ensure your challenges are solved. My plans are to ensure that there is success and prosperity upon your life, but be weaved in my heart, you know, with the threads of God. Yes, allow the threads of God so that you are weaved together with God until you are the final product. God is looking for the final product. This final product is God's wine skin. So, so the final product, therefore, is going to be able to contain the anointing. Yes, the new wine skin that God is releasing in this season. God is releasing. So he's saying he wants to weave you. He wants to make you. He wants to make sure that you are the new wine skin that God has designed. Yes, he wants to make sure that you are, you are the proper garment that can really contain the anointing that is releasing for this reason. But you must be made first by God. God. So he says, follow me and I will make you. And how does he make us? He weaves us in and we are one with him. The Bible says we are members of the body of Jesus, of his flesh and his bones. So our destiny is certain. Our future is great with the Lord. Hallelujah. So you are the final product. 
COVID-19 and lockdown, this is not God's plans. Yes, it's not God's plans. God's plans is peace. Yes, God's plans is our well-being. God's plans is the advancement of his kingdom. But as, therefore, as we, we, we follow the requirements, as we follow the prescription, let's understand God's mind. Let's, let's pursue the heart of God. Let's pursue the mind of God. Let's, let's be positioned where our mindset is going to be shifted. There has to be a mindset shift. If you want to see God move you, if you want to go beyond this time, even as a leader, as a minister, as an apostle, or a prophet, or, you know, leading a, a, a ministry or a church, God is taking you to a place where you need to be positioned where God wants you to be positioned. Shift, a mindset shift. Don't look at, at the achievements of the past because the achievements of the past may not help you in the coming move of God. Put your ear on the ground so you can hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Don't look at Jesus and see a carpenter's son. Be careful of what you're seeing when you look unto Jesus. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Because we have not walked through this before, so we don't know how to respond. We don't know how to react to whatever is happening. But looking unto Jesus, looking unto the ark of his presence, his name is Jesus Christ, looking unto the ark of his presence, yes, we're going to get direction, we're going to get leadership, we're going to begin to see the way. But the Bible says because we have not walked through it, in order for you to get direction, looking unto Jesus the author and finish of our faith. So I want you to take the story of Joshua and, and bring it there for the New Testament and see Jesus. He says, follow me and I will make you. So Jesus is walking ahead. He says, follow me and I will make you. So Jesus wants to make us. Jesus wants to make his church. He says, I will build my church. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against us. So his church is a prevailing church. His church is an overcomer. His church is a conquering church. So he says, follow me and I will make you. So we are made as we follow him. They are entering into a promised land. And I really want you to just also understand this. We are moving into a, a, a destiny, into the future full of uncertainties. So, but in Christ Jesus, there is certainties. If one may put it that way. You know, you are sure of the destiny because you are in Christ Jesus. You are looking unto Jesus who is giving direction. He is changing your plans. Some of you already had plans for the year 2020, but Jesus is moving things around. He's changing your plans. He's bringing his plans into place so that you may follow his plans. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, and, and I want you to, uh, to see this quickly. Uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 11, and verse 10 to 12. Verse 10 to 12. The Bible says, For the land which you go to, possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. I want you to look at the land here as your destiny in Christ Jesus. You may look at the land here in the context of it being the church of Jesus Christ. And I want you to realize the church of Jesus Christ is not dying out because verse 12 says, the Lord cares for the land and the eyes of the Lord are on the land from beginning of year to the end of the year. So there is no day where the eyes of the Lord have moved away. It is for that reason, therefore, that you need to be focused on the one whose eyes are on your life from beginning of the year to end of year. I also want you to note, verse 11 says, this land is a land of hills and valleys. And this land drinks water 
from the reign of heaven. But then God compares in the, in the scripture this land with another land. He talks about the land of Egypt from where they came from, the land of Egypt. He says in the land of Egypt things were easy because it was like a garden, you know, a vegetable garden where you would water on foot. But he says in this land it is not possible. So this talks about total dependence upon the Lord because you can't water on foot through the hills and the valleys and, and you, go through, you have to rely on the reign of God. So it is about rain. God is releasing his rain. As, you, as you're trusting upon the Lord, as you walk through the path that you have not walked before, depend upon the reign of God. And when the Bible talks about the rain, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Depend upon the Holy Spirit to water your life, to water your future. Yes, to cause a shift upon your life, to take you to a place and a position where God wants you to be. The rain from above. With a sharp eyesight. Ezekiel, the Bible shows us about Ezekiel. You know, talking about advancement. Ezekiel, the Bible says, talked about the river. He says he saw this river and God was leading him to the river. And that is exactly what God wants us to do in this season. Don't overtake yourself. Move with the spirit of the Lord. Ezekiel put it clearly. He says in Ezekiel chapter 47, you know, as you read, uh, you can just read the whole chapter. And he says that, well, he saw this river and the one that was leading him, who is the Lord here in this case, he says he measured a thousand cubits, five soccer fields. He says, he says, he brought me in. So Ezekiel had the eagle's eyesight. Because even though he was about 500 meters away, he could still see the Lord. And so the Lord expects us, therefore, to see him. Ezekiel could still see the Lord and hear his voice. Two things. He could hear the voice, he could hear the voice, and he could still see the Lord as he's leading him. He says he moved 500 meters, and then when he gets there, he measured another. The man measured another 500 meters. Ezekiel could still see, and he moved with the Lord. Keep your eyes on the ark of his presence. The Lord Jesus, by his spirit, is leading us, pouring out his water to make this river for his church. He says until he was in a place, as the man measured, in a place where no one can stand. He was ankle deep initially, and then knees deep, and then waist deep. And then he moved to a place where no one could stand. But he got there through the leadership of the Spirit of the Lord. God is leading us through his priests, through his Levites, through the presence of the ark. God is leading us through his word. God leads us according to our level. As his age, you know, he leads us according to, you know, as his age appropriate. Wherever you are in, in the Spirit, God will lead you. God will lead you through his voice, his audible voice, but God will also lead you through the word of God. If you are still at the word level, God will just lead you through the word to take you to another level, to take you to another season. Ezekiel's eye was like an eagle's eye. He could still see 500 meters away. And so he was led by God. The path we are working through, church, we have not walked before. So we need the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is leading his church in this season. And lastly, the scripture that I said I will quote later, which is uh, Isaiah 59, 19. An interesting scripture. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I prefer to read it this way, but it has the same meaning. Either way, it's the same meaning. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I want you to really see the Spirit of the Lord is always much stronger. Even if you read it this way, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, in other words, the, the flood of the Holy Spirit will be much greater than the flood of the enemy. So God is leading us Yes, 
the doors of the churches are closed. We are kept away from corporate praise and worship from the house of the Lord. We are kept away from corporate prayer. We are kept away from, you know, uh, a, a corporate hosting of the presence of God. The Bible says two are better than one. We are kept away from that presence. But the Lord promised to lift up a standard. So his standard, even during this particular time, is much higher than the standard of the enemy. Yes, we see our destiny through his presence. Would you just take note of that? His ark is a doorway into God's heart. God's heart. See God's heart, and you will see his purpose. See God's heart, and you will see your destiny. Because your destiny is contained in the heart of God. Do not look at him as a carpenter's son, for those that did missed their miracles. Look at Jesus and see the Messiah, see the Christ. He's not one of the great prophets. He's leading us into a place of fulfillment. We don't know what the future holds, but he knows. So when we are focused on him, so we can stand and declare we know because we know him. We know because we have an intimate relationship with him. Don't let confusion bring you down. So allow that mindset shift. Yes, this is a new season to change your mindset. Receive it, this new word. To some of you, this word may be new, but God is taking you and bringing you to a place of fulfillment through the word you are hearing right now because it's taking us to a place of fulfillment. Oh, it's going to be amazing and good. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. You might not have walked this path, but it says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. I know what I'm weaving together just for you. I know how I'm binding you together with me so you can see your destiny. May the Lord take you to a destiny tonight. May you be fulfilled in your heart knowing that God cares and he can see all, he can see the future. God supplies all your needs. Yes, he meets all our needs. He's our God who supplies our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God directs our path in every respect. There are some stuff upon our lives we are throwing away. So this is a season for sanctification. So let the Lord sanctify you and by his spirit, by his blood, let the shame of Egypt be rolled away in Jesus' name that you may enter into the place of wonders. We are entering into the place of wonders. May you be led of God, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you here in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person listening to this word. As we look unto Jesus tonight, I pray that you're going to fill them with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, I pray that the, the, the eagle's eyes anointing is going to be released upon their lives in the name of Jesus, that they may see you with clarity in Jesus' name. That their eyes may be sharpened tonight to hear your voice with clarity as you lead and direct our path. Yes, Lord, we're going to follow with simplicity. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, as Jesus declared that follow me and I will make you that they be made my father as, as they are following the voice. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, gracious Lord. In the name of Jesus, even in areas of difficulties, I thank you, Lord. You said your, your burden is, is, is light. Yes, Father, your yoke is easy. And I pray that, Father, you'll release the, 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 easy, the easiness of the burden and the yoke of the Lord upon their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, where it's hard and heavy, we break and nullify. Yes, the heaviness, the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. Because your burden is light and your yoke is easy, Lord. In Jesus' name, let it be easy as we see, as we follow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We bless your name, Father. We give you praise. And I, I pray, Father, even for everyone that could be sick right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command that pain to leave in Jesus' name. Because by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you. And God bless you tonight as you've been listening to this word. You have been hearing this word because God is leading you to a place greater than your mind. 
greater than what we have ever asked him for. For this is the God that can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think in Jesus' name. Your promotion has come in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen.